Today we will have a look on the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise with the mechanical shutter and with a helix mission and a 2D cross mission with real elevations. I will show you how we can import Carmel files into DJI Pilot and how we can edit the missions. We will use two mission files and they are created with the map creator and you can see it at the end how we create them and how we can export them in a Carmel format that we can use for DJI Pilot 2. We can see here the screen from the DJI RC Pro Enterprise. As you can see, I also installed DJI Pilot PE, but uh, we will use it use today the DJI Pilot 2. In this uh, view, we can see that we can edit uh, waypoints. I will go into, we can see I've already created missions. And now we will import a Carmel file, not a CarmZ file, a Carmel file. We can choose between internal memory or external SD card. I choose my SD card. If you implement an SD card into the RC Pro, it will create a folder structure. We have to go to the mission folder and there I have already prepared uh, some missions. You can also see uh, COMZ files. I will now import a cross mission with uh, real elevations. Barn 2 COMZ Carmel. I choose waypoints. I choose relative to the start point. And it creates the mission. Actually, we cannot see the waypoints, so we have to go into the, the file. Now we can see the cross mission with real elevations. We can see in blue the star point, and actually we have zero pictures for this mission, but we have the distance and also the flight time. And we have 31 waypoints. I go into the editor. Now we have three icons. At the right, it's the general uh, mission, the first item, the home. So we can choose now the aircraft. This is important for the overlap for the images. And <clears throat> you can see we, we can uh, also see that it's relative to the star point. Now we go to the mission button. We can see safety flight altitude, the speed. We can change the, the speed. But it's important that we go not too fast, but it will recalculate the speed either later if we uh, have the distance for the pictures. Now, uh, important that the gimbal um, is at manual. If we choose it for uh, each waypoint, it will be complicated. So we have to edit each waypoint. I will choose it manual. So we have to fix it at the beginning of the mission and it will copy always the same gimbal. Now, <coughs> important point, uh, default is that at each waypoint the aircraft will stop. We change that to curve mode. And another important point is at the end on the mission. I will not uh, go home, I will just end the mission. So we have control on the aircraft. Now we have to edit the first waypoint, only the first waypoint. We go to waypoints. Actually I'm on 31. So I choose the start waypoint. You can see waypoint number one. And here we have to add an action. As you can see on the left we have uh, uh, only zero pictures. So I will go down here and add an action. So that's different between older uh, DJI Pilot apps. We can have more uh, possibilities. So I will start a distance interval shooting. I choose the button. And now we can fix the distance. Default is 10 meters. I will change that. 8 meters. 
Now you can see with 8 meters we have 129 images. So it's not important uh, to choose this distance interval for each waypoint, only for the start waypoint, and it will copy it for the whole mission. Now we can uh, uh, play with that. I will just change the meters. I will go to 5 meters. And now we have 240, 14 uh, images. And it's also um, the advantage of the Mavic 3 Enterprise is that we have a mechanical shutter and so we can have really fast images 0 0.7 seconds per, per image and that allows us to have the whole mission in only about 4 minutes. Now that's all. Now we save this mission and if we go back here on this image, you can see it saved the mission. It's the same uh, as the, the other barn kmz file. It's just to show you how we can import it. Now we will do the same for a Helix mission. It's a bit, li little bit more complicated. I choose the external SD card, go to mission and I import the Helix mission. <clears throat> also here we choose the waypoints, start altitude, and now we can see the Helix mission. Now we have something that's uh, missing. We have not the point of interest, as we choose only a Carmel file. If we choose uh, later a KMZ file who is exported from the map, map curator, it's all already done. But if you uh, choose only the Carmel import, you have a little bit more to, to do, but you can also influence the, the whole mission. So I go to edit mode. I have here this barn in the, in the center. First of all, we do the same. We choose our aircraft, Mavic 3 Enterprise. And now we have to add a point of interest. So we have the barn in the center. Now I will add a point of interest. It's the icon on the left corner. And you can see the red point of interest. We have to move it onto the barn. Then into the mission editor, we have now a point of interest. So we choose the point of interest for the whole mission and you can see all the waypoints from the Helix mission point to the point of interest. Also here we have to choose the curved mode so that it will not stop at each waypoint. And in the waypoint mission we go to the start waypoint and we do the same we add an action so the distance shooting and now we can see the number of pictures uh, default is 10 meters let's see uh, what it means 10 meters we have 70 images 10 meters is a lot for a Helix mission, so I will downsize to 6 meters. Now we have 112 images. Also here it's only for the first waypoint, that's the big difference. In the SDK4 it was important to choose that for each waypoint, but now it's uh, simpler, so we choose it only for the first uh, waypoint and it will do the whole mission with the distance. Here it's uh, important that you let the gimbal at manual so you can always point during the mission to the barn. We can uh, choose also automatic uh, gimbal 
positions, but that's a little bit more complicated and it's only useful if you, you use a CAMZ export and not a CAML export. So we let it manual, you can see later in the video how it works when it is in automatic uh, point mode. It points always to the barn, but that's programmed the gimbal angle uh, into the, the program from the map creator. Now we save the, the mission. And we have now both mission imported. So it's <coughs> very easy to do. Now let's start the real mission. We are first in the checklist where we can see the flight time and also the distance. So let's start the mission. We will go back to the start point. And uh, you have to see on the screen the altitude and the distance. So it's an elevation mission. We will always change the, the altitude. One of the main advantage of this aircraft is the manual shutter, as we can take really fast images. So that's real time what you can see here. And you can also see into the mission how we change always the altitude. What we can see, we go really fast with the aircraft. If you have a look on the cross, so we have an overdrift for the curves, but it follows the waypoints. Now we overdrift and we go back to the grid and it will overdrive on the other side. That's to maintain speed and go to the, through the, the waypoints. This overdrive, it's not so very important for the final stitching. It's more important to have all the, the images. So it will take 145 pictures in this mission. Now we will have a look on the Helix mission. We will start the mission. We will take 138 images. We go first to the start point. I fixed the mission speed to 4 meters per second. You can even go faster. So I start at low altitude, it's only 13 meters. You have first to check your waypoint. You can uh, change this altitude. So go uh, before you start a mission to the start point and check the altitude. And now we can see the, the real speed of this aircraft into a point of interest mission. So let's have a look at the gimbal angle, minus 33, minus 34, minus 35. So it's full automatic in this mission. And it will go down to minus 70 degree at the top of the mission. So that's uh, one of the mission which gives us really good stitching results from the whole terrain and also from the object. And that's typical one of the mission you cannot do with other apps. But we can export from the map creator, you can use into Leechi, you can use into DJI Pilot and of course you can use it in HDR Pano. So now we are at minus 57 degrees pitch angle. You can see how we follow the line and we will reach the waypoint 21 with minus 70 degrees. And from now the whole mission is inverted. So we will go down. Now let's see the result from the Helix mission. That's only the Helix mission in the reality capture. So it's very precise. And that gives us really good results into the, the stitching. And if we compare to the, to the uh, cross mission, you can see the overdrive, but uh, it follows the Terra. That's uh, one of the important uh, point. And that's also one of my favorite place to test the software. 
as we have to follow the Terra. And so I can also compare the result at the end. Now let's have a look in the new SDK5. So if we compare the Waypoint uh, Mission Manager, we have only a few uh, functions. We can import the current set files. We cannot individually program uh, the mission as we could it before in the SDK4. You can see here the format from this current set file. So DJI uh, has documented uh, these files so that we can uh, work uh, on these files. So the mission are now generated with this um, XML type files. And we have two uh, files. We have the template camel file and we have also the Wayline file in the, the same format. And we have also uh, now a documentation what it means. So it's a little bit different before we programmed uh, native uh, the missions and now we have to use these files to load. That does not mean that we cannot do complex mission as I showed you before. We can do the same stuff as the helix mission, the cross mission with elevations, but it's a little bit different. And that's also the important uh, point why I'm working actually on the map creator and not on the Android version of the SDK5, as we can only use real waypoint aircrafts. All the other aircrafts like the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Classic and also the Mini 3 Pro, they are not supported from the SDK5. Now let's have a look on the map creator. So I will load first uh, the 3D mission. We change to satellite I can switch to the helix mission and that's what I exported and now we have the possibility to uh, use DJI Pilot Carmel export if you don't switch that on you will use Google Carmel export there are uh, small differences from the altitudes for the DJI Pilot concept files, I'm, on, I'm actually testing, so it's not available for everybody. So there are some tests uh, going on, but it will be available soon. So that's for the 3D mission. Important point uh, here, I'm at, at 30 meters, it's much too high. So I will change that to 13 meters. Have I already tested on this Terra? So you can see the start point here. So I have to check that with the aircraft. Go first start point and check the altitude for your object. And we have the waypoints. So that's the 21 waypoint at minus 70 degrees. And we start at minus 25 degrees pitch angle at 13 meters. And then we go up to 42 meters, so it's calculated for automatic, depending on the radius you choose. Now let's load the 2D mission. So it switches automatic to 2D mission. Actually, it's not an elevation mission, so we have to change that on elevation. 60 meters, it's much too high. I will go down to 13 meters and I will add the cross mission. So we have also, also the star point here at 13 meters. Then we go up to 34 meters and at the end 26 meters. So, so you can see here how we follow the Terra. If we go back into edit mode, you can also change the, the positions so it's very easy to do and it will adapt also the altitude from the Terra. Then you can save. If you save don't forget to switch on Carmel 
for DJI Pilot and you can save the Carmel file. If you have a look on the final result, it's quite amazing what we can do with the Mavic 3 Enterprise with the mechanical shutter and also with DJI Pilot with these two missions. You can see in my other videos how we use reality capture and also import the final result into Blender. I will not repeat it uh, in this video. So I invite you to look, have a look on the other videos. So that's for today. I ho hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.